Hi, and welcome to the first update of my master's thesis game. In the past two weeks, I have been working hard on game features such as feedback and content. In this video, I will lead you on a journey through those additions. Shall we? Just to remember where the game progress was on the previous video, the game had the procedural content generation model for generating challenges, which is the focus of my thesis, some enemies that behave in the same way, and all the basic mechanics for the game to be a game, but it lacked content and feedback. Given that the user's test phase for the model is coming very soon, I started working on these features to make the experience as pleasant as I possibly could for the players. A new bullet type was added. To increase both the variety of enemies' attack and the number of different weapons that the player can have, there is now a bullet that behaves like a grenade, damaging both enemies and the player and pushing weapons away. This created an interesting strategy for the player. This bullet is also used for the explosion on death mutation that I will talk about later. Players' hat and AGD changes with weapon being held. To keep up with the Christmas themed hat, gun and bullets, the second type of weapon had to be holiday related as well. There is now a Christmas weapon and a Halloween weapon. For the player to know which type of bullet each weapon has, the HUD of the weapon was updated to show that information instead of the generic bullet it had before. Aside from that, why not give the player a cool themed hat as well? Dungeon Progress Indicator added. There is now a visual indicator to show the player how close he is from finishing the game. The objective is to clear 20 rooms, so each time the player clears one room, one strike is added to the scoreboard. Reinforce the visual feedback of the player being damaged. Aside from the sound and the animation that plays when the player is damaged, there is now a red flash of the screen to make sure the player never misses the information that he was damaged. Added visual feedback of the player shooting. The screen gently shakes when the player shoots or a grenade explodes. Enemies now have health bars. This way the player can keep track of how many shots plus throws an enemy needs to be taken down or simply to help on the decision of what enemy he wants to target next. The health bar has a visual indicator of its center to help the player with the damage calculations. An enemy with new behavior was added to the game. This is the first enemy where its attack is not shooting, but rather jumping towards the player. Sounds were added to the game. Shooting, throwing, picking up weapons, taking damage, explosions, enemies shooting, enemies dying, clearing a room and trying to shoot with an empty weapon will all play sounds. Enemies can now have mutations. Before the game starts, we can create mutations that are combined with enemies and choose how many mutated enemies we want the game to have. The idea is that a random mutation from the mutation pool will be chosen, along with a random enemy from the enemy pool to create a mutated enemy. For these mutations to be identifiable by the player, some color is added to their sprite. The color corresponds to the mutation the enemy suffered. Right now, the game has two possible mutations implemented, one where the health of the original enemy is increased, and one where an enemy leaves a bomb when he dies.
All of these things combine, and this is how the game currently looks. Oh. 